We back, baby. <laughs> Guys, welcome to another daily gaffer. This is, if you're new to Armchair Gaffers, this is supposed to be a daily show where we try and just fill in some of the things that we missed out on the main pod. Because it's not easy to get through everything in an hour and a half. So um, that's why we do these and our live streams guys if you haven't seen our latest live stream it's up now on youtube and our latest podcast is also up now on youtube and on spotify and apple pods and google pods or wherever you get your podcasts from but this is the daily gaffer and i'm your boy i'm jess i have many ali- ali- aliases i have many different names but just call me jess today guys gonna talk mainly or briefly about Chelsea, um, Chelsea Football Club, who seem to be back, baby. Not for me. Guys, I am not convinced with Chelsea. Everyone is saying that they back, baby, because they secured Caicedo and imminent arrival of um, Romeo Lavia to add to Enzo Fernandez, so their midfield is meant to be the perfect midfield ready to um, take on all comers. But I'm not convinced. I'm, I'm not convinced. Um, do I rate Caicedo? The answer is very yes. Just very yes. Do I rate um, Lavia? I think he's good. He's good. Do I rate Enzo Fernandez? I think he's also good. Is that enough? No. Players in football teams, in teams, need time to gel. We've seen this before in the Galactico era. You can't just sign the best players and say, oh, job done. You know, we've got all the best players. We're going we're gonna to win everything. It's not how football works. Um, look at Leicester in 2015-16 when they won the league. They had a decent goalkeeper, um, bang average defenders, in my opinion. They had... Uh, a good midfielder, a very good midfielder in Kante, a very good winger in Mahrez and a very good forward in Jamie Vardy and everyone else was just okay. Alright? That's how you build a team, that's how you win in terms of longevity. So just having... And plus, I feel like since since Chelsea have been linked to these players that they've been overrated. Like Personally, I don't think Enzo Fernandez is... Fantastic. Okay, I'm not saying he's not good, but you know, fantastic is what I'm saying. Um, now more on um, on this midfield trio: Fernandez, Casado, Lavia. Chelsea don't play with a midfield three. Uh, on the weekend when they played Liverpool, it was uh, more like a three-four-three three setup. Um, three centre backs: Chuan, James, flanking uh, with a double pivot of. Fernandez and the Roadrunner. Sorry, Fernandez and Gallagher. That's my screen. Um, with a front three of Sterling, Chukamaka, and um, Nicholas Jackson. Okay, so we can assume that Poch is going to go with a two man midfield. So who does he go for? Fernandez is in, and Caicedo will be in. So where does Lavia fit into this? Is is Poch going to abandon all his um, pre-season preparations and what he's good at to shoehorn Lavia into the team? At what cost? What does that do to the shape of the team? If you're going to go for um, a three-man midfield uh, with four at the back, a 4-3-3, three, three, sorry, um, then Reese James and Chilwell are going to have to play full-back, not wing-back, which means that either Diassi, Thiago Silva or Cole will miss out. So the trade-off you know, let's just not assume that you've signed these three midfielders and that is going to be the lineup. Chelsea fans, I just want you guys to be realistic, okay? So for me, um, I don't think you back, baby, and um, I also don't think I think you do better than last season, but that's a given. Because um, if you do worse than last season, you're getting relegated. So. You do markedly better than last season. Do I see you get a top four? Yeah. I can see you guys get a top four. Not comfortably. 
and not due to your excellence but mainly due to teams around you faltering so um yeah it's not going to be playing sailing chessie please um still on the subject of chessie uh hakim ziyech you guys are going to sign hakim ziyech oh no again there's a typo you guys are going to sign hakim ziyech version 2.0 um in the form of michael Olise from Crystal Palace after triggering his £35 million release clause. How did no one know about this release clause? I'm starting to wonder about Todd Bowley. Um, you've got this FFP loophole that you found, amortising the cost of transfers over 15 years and whatnot. Have you guys heard that apparently, although Chelsea have now spent a billion dollars, um, using dollars just so I can use, use a billion, they spent a billion dollars since Kalilic took over um, last year. However, they've really only had an outlay of, I think, like maybe 200 million because of how they structured the deals. And if you include player sales, they've actually, they've actually got money in the bank. Todd Bowley, you are just an asset manager. You are not a football club owner. You're just here to manage the assets and you're doing a good job, if we're being fair. But anyways, Chelsea want to sign Michael Olise, who is, for me, Hakim Ziyech 2.0. Um, you, you probably will disagree. Good. Um, I'm just wondering, Ziyech doesn't even feature for Chelsea. So how is his little brother going to feature for Chelsea? Okay, do you, are, are, is there a difference between Ziyech and Olise for me? Olise may be more physical. I'm guessing. I don't know. I'm just looking at this team. Looking at the team that played against Liverpool. Jackson, Sterling, Chukwemeka. Mudrick is is there floating around on the bench as a, as an attacker. You're going to have Ziyech now. Sorry. Olise. Um, Madweke is floating around. Um... I'm not convinced Chelsea. And you aren't squad depth, I know. But the truth is, Chelsea, right now you don't need squad depth. You're playing Premier League, Carabao Cup, FA Cup. There's no European football. So this isn't the season for depth. This is the season to get your ducks in a row and just try and, you know, just not embarrass your fans every weekend. That's what I've got on Chelsea, guys. I can move on now. Um, oh, I'm doing some predictions for the season. That's what I'm doing. Um, I think um, the top two will be the same as last season. Just going to get it out there right away. Top two will be uh, Manchester City and Arsenal. In what order? I hope it's Arsenal and City. Um, with KDB's injury, I think that uh, City will be missing something vital, especially when you combine that with the absence of um, Ilkay Gondogan. I've seen that um, online they've been saying that the, if, if City sign Paqueta, he can fill the void left by KDB and the answer is just no. Just no. <laughs> There's no way Paqueta can fill KDB's void. So we need to just abandon, just no, just forget about that. Um, so I think, I think, Man City and Arsenal one and two, in any order. Um, on the podcast last week, which is out now on YouTube, the link will be in the description. Chris did say that the only team that can beat Arsenal are Arsenal themselves, and that's very true. Um, in terms of third, fourth place I'm gonna go with Newcastle and for third and I think fourth can be anyone of United, Chelsea, Liverpool and um Dark Horse. Tottenham I'm not I'm not sure Tottenham will get um in top four at all. Yeah. Chelsea, United, Liverpool, maybe even Villa. I know Villa lost to Newcastle on opening day. But it wasn't so straightforward, guys. They they missing Buendia, 
Ming's got an early injury, rampant St. James's Park on opening day. Most teams would have gone there and lost in the same manner in those same circumstances. Um, relegation, Everton finally going to go down this year, um, joined by Luton and Sheffield United Football Club. Still in the Premier League, Arsenal signed David Raya, which I, as an Arsenal fan, think is a fantastic deal. It's a three-year loan with an option for £27 million transfer um, or something along those lines. Um, people are saying that it's bad news because keeper competition is not good, yada, yada, yada. I think people will just say what they're going to say. Um, yeah, there's competition for every place. And I've heard things said such as, you know, but the goalkeeper position is very different because there's only one goalkeeper. Um, but no, I think um, I think competition's good. Uh, the cream always rises to the top. And um, what's the worst that happens? David Rea is better than Ramsdale and he plays instead. Or Ramsdale's better than David Rea and he plays instead. I, I don't see the downside of this. Guys, maybe I'm naive. Um, as an Asna fan, um, but it's, I just find it um, crazy how a first choice goalkeeper is willing to come and leave Premier League team and go to another Premier League team and play second fiddle. And you got that's testament to Michael Arteta and his management and his aura more than you believe. Um, so I think real, the real loan deal is a good deal. Lastly, guys, um, nearly done. Today's gonna be a quick one. I'm gonna talk about briefly talk about the legacy of um, of Neymar Jun. We're gonna get into this more in depth on Thursday. Um, tomorrow? Well, wow, tomorrow's Thursday. We're gonna get into it in more depth tomorrow on our Continental Corner live stream. So please tune in. But I'm gonna give my brief thoughts on Neymar. I said yesterday that I believe Neymar is better than Ronaldinho. The numbers say the same thing. And the thing is, what you guys need to understand is that when you look at Ronaldinho through rose tinted glasses, okay, we don't look at Neymar the same. We did when he was at Barcelona, but the moment he left and went to PSG, um, the lens at which we looked at Neymar through changed drastically. His numbers at PSG are ridiculous. I think he, I've brought it down actually. 118 goals in 173 games. Um, he's, he's outperformed Ronaldinho in terms of stats. In terms of impact on the pitch, it's been the exact same. He's had more longevity than Ronaldinho. Um, guys, it, the, the facts are just the facts. Okay, we love um, Dinho, but the truth is Neymar has had a better career and is better. What does this move to Al? Where is he going? Damn, damn right down. What does this move to Saudi Arabia say for Neymar's legacy? Yeah, you know, he was a Ballon d'Or nominee while still playing in Brazilian football. Um, he went to Barca, conquered all. Went to PSG, he'd done everything he could do in his power, but the, the curse that PSG had been cursed with is just too much to overcome even for him. And uh, he done his best with Brazil. Unfortunate at the 2014 World Cup, was it? When he got that back injury. Um, what was that 16? What was that the Olympics? 14. 2014. Um, you know, it is what it is. I, I still love the man. I think he's fantastic. Only 31 years old, so I don't think he's leaving the game just yet. A good five years in Saudi Arabia, earning big money, and then probably... Back to back to Europe, maybe maybe Monaco, who knows? Who knows? But yeah, no, Neymar's legacy for me hasn't been tainted, and I think he's still one of the best to ever grace the game. Um, better than a lot of your favorites, guys. If we're being honest, that is it. That is my daily gaffer. I'm done. Um, I do these off the cuff, really. I do like five minute prep, and then you just say, "Fuck it, let's go." So now we're here. I'll be back tomorrow for another Daily Gaffer and tomorrow evening we'll be out with a live stream, a Continental Corner live stream where we cover everything European based and the SPL, the real SPL. If you know, you know. 
I've been um, Jess. You guys have been great. And I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.